I had two abnormal pap smears just okay. at my regular appointment. So I was sent to get a cervical biopsy to find out what was causing the abnormality. And then the biopsy came back with cervical intraepithelial dysplasia. So basically, um, precancerous cells it with stage two to three, I believe. The doctor at the time recommended a series of things that were all in my opinion, really aggressive and abrasive treatment options. One was a cervical biopsy and one was some kind of laser electrosurge. He said it's not guaranteed it would work the first time, like they removed the abnormal cells and then wow. it, it may come back. So wow. I left really uh, kind of shaken after that appointment because yeah. to me, like you can't even guarantee it's gonna work. Uh, and it's very aggressive and they do sedate yeah. you for it and it's in the operating room and you know, it's a hefty thing. Sad part is no alternatives were offered. So I'm lucky that I, was pointed nice. in your direction, but for those other women, you know, if even if this video helps one, then yeah, I did my job. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. And today we're here with a success story, a patient from my practice, Alyssa. So let's jump in here to the interview. So Alyssa, tell me a bit about what life was like before, sort of paint us the picture. In other words, what was going on and the traditional medical providers you'd seen, what was basically their recommendation? I had two abnormal pap smears just okay. at my regular appointments um, yearly. Mm -hmm. So I guess after the second one, um, it's a little bit of a red flag. So I was sent to get a cervical biopsy to find out what was causing the abnormality. And then the biopsy came back with cervical intraepithelial dysplasia. So basically, um, precancerous cells it with stage two to three, I believe. Um, so it's pretty which significant. Is scary. Yeah, pretty Very significant. Scary. Very scary. Yeah, I was uh, 26 years old at the time. I'm 28 right now. And then obviously that's not anything you would expect that should be routine it should be normal sure and then i had moved so i had met up with a new gynecologist after who reviewed and repeated the tests and it came back the same and then at that point they wanted to do treatment so the doctor at the time recommended a series of things that were all in my opinion really aggressive and abrasive treatment options one was a cervical biopsy and one was some kind of laser electrosurge a leap procedure right is that the leap. one yeah. that's the one for anyone and listening then, if you want to just google image that you'll be horrified at what that it surgical was scary procedure. <laughs> yeah and what did they tell it you was... did they tell you was there any were there going to be long-term ramifications for this why did they yeah. jump to that and did they say there'd be an effect on your fertility or your cycle or, or... What was the prognosis? There? Well, you know, the scary thing was he didn't even really mention any of that stuff until I asked for it, wow. um, which was even worse because, but I have a medical background, so I knew what to ask. But yes, uh, after sure. I asked him if it would impact fertility or um, reproductibility, he said, well, first of all, he said it's not even guaranteed to work because I guess they wow. excise the abnormal cells, the abnormal tissue in your cervix. And then... With every time they do the procedure, there's a 30% uh, chance of decrease that you'll be able to carry to term fully. And have 30% decrease? 30% was the percent he gave me. And he said it so nonchalantly, <laughs> like it's not so a big deal. Every single time you do that surgery procedure, there's a 30% decrease in the chance you'll be able to carry a child to term? Yes, each time. And he said it's not guaranteed it would work the first time. Like they removed the abnormal cells and then wow. it, it may come back. I left really uh, kind of shaken after that appointment. Because yeah. To me, like you can't even guarantee it's gonna work uh, and it's very aggressive and they do sedate yeah. you for it and it's in the operating room and you know, it's a hefty thing. Um, wow. You bleed for days after from what I understand. Oof. So yeah, so, obviously I had to <laughs> look and see what my other options were. Did they say there were other options or were they pretty explicit that this was the only option? Pretty explicit it was the only option. Couldn't kind of give me any kind of background as to what really caused it or, you know, yeah. it was very, let's take the cells out, not let's find out why you even had them in the first place and it was almost very matter of fact oh we do this all the time we do the leap procedure all the time every day women come in with cervical dysplasia right everyone's got precancerous cells yeah. just almost sort of blase about it being so invasive very, very and blase. potentially irreversible for someone who hasn't had children and, and wants them someone who's not even at that stage yet in their life yeah. to give me that as an option was really right. a hard pill to swallow and so they said it was pretty rare that those cells went back and stabilized yep without yeah. doing this treatment so without there was no alternative they didn't recommend anything i asked like is there something i could try first before we jumped to you know booking this procedure and then my answer was a hard no that's scary that's a hard situation to be in especially for mm -hmm. young women that just put their faith in the physician yeah. or the surgeon or specialist or whoever it is and just potentially doing something irreversible at such a young age where you probably wouldn't even be thinking about 
about it because you're exactly. just assuming this is what will save your life. Especially given that percentage that it's not even guaranteed to work. Yes. And you might yeah. have to repeat it multiple times throughout your life. So it that was, was really the, the big thing that we were chatting about in our visits because that was obviously a very acute concern. Besides that, I know there were a few other smaller things we were working on. And, and what were those? Mm -hmm. A lot of other systemic things that were going on with me at the time. Um, I had GI discomfort. I... A lot of things were irritating me. I remember telling you I couldn't even eat garlic or onion or healthy sure. foods without getting uh, an irritable stomach and feeling sure. really, really lethargic and tired all the time. Right. I remember telling you I wasn't able to sleep if I ate up to five hours before I went to bed and I needed so much time before I felt light again. I remember telling you about my allergies. <laughs> Yeah, I had like really bad congestion all the time. And then I also remember um, my cramps were really bad. So food allergies, digestive weakness, needing a lot of like enzymes and probiotics mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. the seasonal allergies. Had you seen other medical practitioners for those as well? And what did they say about those? I had briefly a few years ago, and then I never went back because um, at some point I had GERD. So I had a little bit of acid reflux. Uh -huh. And I was the first choice was proton pump inhibitors, and I didn't want sure. to take those. <laughs> sure. Also, again, an extremely so, strong intervention for the first line intervention. Yep. Um, so I kind of never went back to that and just made peace with the fact that I'd never be able to eat anything and function. <laughs> That's rough for 26. That's a, rough, a whole life ahead of right? you of, of food rough. restriction. You know, when we fast forward a little bit, those mm -hmm. minor symptoms, you know, the, the food sensitivities, the food allergies, bloating, uh, painful menses, roughly when we started working together, taking the formulas, how long would you say it, it took to see results? First of all, I'll talk about what the formula was. You gave me a really awesome um, mix of herbs that I had to drink twice a day. And I did that religiously, which is awesome for me because I have compliance problems. <laughs> 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 but um, I honestly started to see it about two to three weeks out. I really felt a difference. What did you way, notice? I, I felt like I was sleeping better. I was breathing better. Um, my nasal passage felt a little lighter. and then my cramps, they were, I still had a little bit, um, but it was a lot lighter because usually um, around that time of the month, I am in so much pain, I can't walk. So. And then what would you say, at what point was it when some of those minor issues were, you just stopped noticing them? You just stopped noticing bloating or food sensitivities or a little bit of the anxiety aspect. At what point was it? Was it a month? Was it three months? What, what did it look like? It was less than a month. And then the best part is I don't think it ever came back. So I haven't, it's not like it's something I had to keep taking, um, which I didn't know at the time when we started, sure. I thought I had to be on this for life. And then when it came sure. to the end of things, I remember you said, Hey, you know, you don't have to keep taking it anymore. And that I think differs a lot to, you know, Western medicine usually, because again, like I said, they're treating the symptom and not the cause. Sure. Whereas with you, I felt like you found the source of all my problems, which we talked about was, you know, my whole immune system was kind of down at the time under a lot of stress, a lot of things are going on. It wasn't just, you know, let's just make you feel better and it'll come back. Can you tell us the story about what happened with um, the pap smear? Because that was really the most yeah, concerning. That the and thing. that was when you were in really in crisis mode and really quite scared. So what was the ultimate result there? I remember talking to you about it and you said, you know, you probably won't see anything before six months of doing your due diligence and taking this regularly. And I scheduled that same doctor scheduled me for an endocervical curatage, supposedly thinking that we were going to schedule that procedure, but I just wanted to see if it had cleared. That was about five months after I met with you. So before the six month mark and it came back completely negative, there was no cellular dysplasia. And I honestly started crying, I remember. What did the physician you saw say? Oh, because you said, number. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's rare. Usually they just think it was the wrong lab yes. result, right? They're like, they usually just think, oh, maybe it was the wrong lab or oh, the he, results were swift. He was in complete disbelief at the results. He was shocked. I remember getting a phone call and him saying he wants me to come in just to talk about it. And he asked, honestly, he said, I've never seen it happen with a woman, you know, your age with how severe that dysplasia was. What did you do? And I pointed him in your direction. That's yep. a very open-minded medical practitioner. And you he know, was. he was by the end of it, but he wasn't yeah. at the beginning. Um, of course. So. And I get it. The burden of evidence and proof is on me being able to help people get better. You know, this is the kind of thing that is quote unquote irreversible, yeah. right? I mean, this is, is a repeated surgical procedure. I see young women go through before they come to me. This is something that people, like you just said, this physician, this specialist said they'd never seen that before. He'd never seen it before. And I appreciated that he was open to learning about it. Um, yeah. The sad part is no alternatives were offered. So I'm lucky that I 
was nice. pointed in your direction, but for those other women, you know, if even if this video helps one, then yeah, I did my job. Yeah. And that's the sad yeah. thing is that thousands will be doing this every single month, right? Oh, yeah. If not tens of thousands. And um, I only see these kinds of things becoming more and more frequent for whatever reason. So, so you're making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> But that's that's why I yeah. do these, right? Because if it does help even one other woman, then it's worth it. Uh, because it's worth it. you didn't know it was you didn't know there was an alternative, and there was. Oh, with, I had no evidence. idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what hesitations did you have? I mean, to see a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, right? It doesn't necessarily sound very credible. What, oh, what were yeah. your initial hesitations? I honestly didn't know if it would work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not the common route of treatment, sure. especially being in a field where it's all you know, traditional Western medicine and then having medical doctors in the entire family. Sure. Um, initially, right, I was you're from a family of physicians, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I was taking a, a back road, a road less traveled. Um, but, you know, even if it didn't work, there was no harm. And from my point of view, sure. the worst case scenario of this not working would be a lot better than, you know, going under and doing an invasive procedure and then right. paying all that money, having a recovery time. Right. Possibly not having a child and that not working. Like you said, you know, you were initially ridiculed, right? Family of physicians are very skeptical people who want to see a lot of evidence. Oh, they um, do. Um, that being said, though, there there is, I believe. I mean, it's an old practice of medicine. It's been around for, you know, 2000 years. So there has to be some kind of backing to it. I mean, they people have been, they swear by it. They have used these herbs to treat so many different things. And I know cancer is one of them. Believe it or not, the, the formula, the base formula that I had given you is actually from a book written 200 years after Christ. So can you imagine wow. this 1800 documented Oh, I didn't know evidence. that. <laughs> yeah, that one particular, the base formula I used is from a book a couple of hundred years after Christ, around like the year 250-ish. It works that well today with the leading specialists who are going to do this leap procedure and yeah. there's 1800 years of evidence of it being used for that kind of thing. It's almost unbelievable. It is unbelievable. And it really makes you wonder why we're not doing it um, more often. What advice would you give to someone who you know can be helped by this, but is maybe just too skeptical? Honestly, I would tell them of the experience I went through. I was a skeptic at the beginning. I was out of luck though. I mean, what were my other options? And then honestly, Dr. Hein, like you completely switched my perspective. Um, and I would urge anyone to give it a shot because it works. I mean, I believe in it. It works better than Western medicine does. And when given the option, dealing with you and how approachable you are and how personable you are and how you really cared, let's put the Chinese medicine aside, just do even as a doctor um, and as a provider, plus with the healing that you do with your herbs. I mean, it's, it's a no brainer. Thank you. And, and I think the worst case yeah. scenario is, let's say it is surgery we're trying to prevent. Yeah. Worst case scenario, they're going to do the surgery anyway. They're so, going to do it anyway. Right? Yeah. There are all kinds of surgery, not just whether it's cervical or something else. But if they're going to do it anyway, why not why try something try else it? for six months? Of course, something that could potentially, exactly. like this, prevent something that could be life-altering. Again, I'm really shocked that someone in my position wasn't given the alternative and wasn't told about it. I was lucky that I was, again, pointed in your direction, but right. most people aren't. That's the tough part. Because, I mean, even That's the tough me... Part. I found this profession too, because I was a patient myself and no one, no specialist I saw ever said this could potentially this treat, could help you. prevent yeah. or cure. I mean, legally, I can't even say those words, right? But those are the things that that I mean, no one told me. It had to come from a chance referral, just like the way you found me and, and, and so on and so forth. So for me, the value and of like getting like you said, habits. it's so hard to say that word, but it really was cured. It was completely gone. Um, right. And Western medicine just couldn't guarantee that. So <laughs> yeah. And has there yeah. been a resurgence of any of those symptoms in a major way since? No, honestly, they haven't. I, I remember we talked about that entire part of my body was just weak at the time. Yeah. And, you know, it's that whole lower, that whole area. Um, I feel like I'm functioning better. My digestive system, I don't have those issues. And I know the formula you gave addressed all of those. And yeah. honestly, even my, my immune system overall with things like minor colds and flus, it's gotten a lot better since then and that was about a year ago over a year good. ago at this point <laughs> good that is what we want to do right we want real healing which means that you don't need to take anything going forward and anything. while there may be bumps in the road just like life is always changing with stress and of diet etc but that's yeah. that's our really the test of uh of healing so mm -hmm. i'm curious any final thoughts on your side about just people don't know that this is an option they don't know that it's something that can really treat serious health issues. 
Do you have any other final thoughts for someone that's maybe, again, you know, they see a video and like, well, can I really do anything? Or is it just sort of like a little folk practice? Um, a couple of things, just Google it, you know, actually do your research and you'll find that there's articles and there's studies and it's there and it's not just, you know, you know, bogus. Um, the other thing is I will send you my pathology reports and you can see it for yourself. <laughs> when I saw them and when my doctor called me and was shocked, I mean, we shocked a man who, this was a gynecologist who'd been doing surgery um, for, you know, he was 30 years, he was towards retiring and he couldn't believe them. For whoever's watching this, a career gynecologist said he had never yep. seen that in his entire career. He called me and he said he usually doesn't discuss negative results on the phone, but he wanted me to come in just to see what I did. You know, it was all two grim thirds, and gloom. Right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Stage two to three and then come for, for it to be completely cleared in five months, you know. It was a miracle. Thanks for being here, Alyssa. But like you said, nothing, uh, you. <laughs> nothing says the truth more than that, right? The scientific, that, the pap spare there, that report says it all. That report. Yep. Yep. And yeah. then they put me back on um, annual checkups. Instead, they wanted me back for every four to six months to get another curatage. And now I'm just on routine like a, a normal person my age should be. So nice. Well, like that's going to be a, a good feeling. <laughs> it's the best feeling in the world. Honestly, no, that's, you Thank know, you. that's what I do. What I do. So <laughs> thanks for being here. Thank you.